decide whether or not uh, Pulp Pantry should have did this Shark Tank deal with Mark Cuban. Fair use, first of all. We're going to analyze the deal, and you guys let me know if she should have went on ahead and took this deal or not. Hi, Sharks. My name Hi, is Sharks. Caitlin Bobbitell, and I'm here seeking $500,000 in exchange for 10% equity in my company, Pulp Pantry. Pantry. All right, so right off the bat, $500,000 for 10% in Pulp Pantry. I'm going to let you guys know there's things that she can do with this, uh, so keep watching. Sharks, I know you like talking numbers, so let me throw some at you. In the United States, we waste 54 million tons of food every single year. <sighs> can you believe that normally all of this gorgeous produce would have been tossed? Or this, the fiber left over from juicing fruits and vegetables. This too normally goes unloved. Talk about a missed opportunity. Well, Sharks, the madness stops with us because Pulp Pantry has developed a new way to snack with impact. We take the thousands of pounds of organic produce that would otherwise go unloved every single week and upcycle them into a line of real veggie chips that are made from, you guessed it, fresh vegetables not corn not okay so they have a unique um product okay so it's called pulp pantry you know what pulp is um there's a lot of it's super competitive space there's a lot of vegetable chips fruit chips out there you know but most of the time when you turn it around and you look at the label there's a whole bunch of crap in there so it's like it's not even really like healthy anymore so they took like you're super genius they took the the waste from all of these different uh fruits and vegetable companies that like manufacture a lot of different products food products and stuff and then they created an entirely different product make sure you hit that like as you come in you know protect your asses starch and certainly not grains for that matter we're spreading the good vibes only with a delicious and nutritious snack that's packed with flavor and fiber all the while tackling one of our most pressing environmental issues food waste sharks it's crunch time who's ready to dig in and make a deal so what do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments right now. What do you think about her business model? Uh, even though it's a competitive space, uh, like vegetable chips and fruit chips and everything, do you think uh, that this one is a sustainable business model or is it just some flash in the pan face? Uh, give me a second, guys. We are. I love. We have our sea salt, salt vinegar, jalapeno lime, and barbecue. But the things to note with the cold chips, they're 100% vegan, they're grain-free, they're gluten-free, and the best part about it is every serving has five grams of fiber, meaning that a bag of chips is nearly your day's serving of fiber. So it's super nutritious. It has everything in it that you need, man. So when you compare it to regular vegetable chips, it's, it's, it's top of the line. So I can see why she was confident enough to come on here and ask for 500K uh, for 10%. But I still think 10% is too much uh, for them to... I'm amazed. They're so good. They're so good. I'm so happy you love I mean, I could tell you're a woman of impeccable taste because you're wearing my good American and the success jump. So well done. Lots of kissing up going on. Lots of kissing up. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Even better than the chunks of pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How are you getting a starch consistency? This okay, so now she's about to break down how she does it. I don't really like the fact that they televised this and then they try to, um, you know, talk about competition. And, and everything well of course especially if you televise and you know even though you guys might be fast to market you're going to create a lot of competition right now but the whole thing about it is she's super unique with how she positioned herself yeah I would expect from, um, you know, a grain, because it's there. It's just balancing the fresh ingredients, which is the fresh vegetables. We also add alfalfa flour yeah. um, and an okara flour, which is another upcycled ingredient made from actually the fresh There's no gluten in these at all? No grains. And you look at the back of a veggie chip in a normal grocery store, the first ingredient you'll probably see is potato starch or dried potato flakes. And that's what I'm talking about, like all the additives that they put in those vegetable chips. I remember when they first uh, came out with vegetable chips and uh, like the cucumber chips and uh, the carrot chips and everything like that. It's super exciting. Just like now, they got keto chips and everything. But when you turn the turn it back uh, turn it back around, you look at the label. You're gonna see a whole bunch of different like hard to pronounce chemicals and ingredients that you didn't plan on. If you want potato chips, it should just be potatoes. If you want carrot chips, it should just be carrots. So with hers, it doesn't have all of that stuff, which makes her value go up, in my opinion. So we opted to create a version that has no potatoes. Can you give me the stack on pricing from the cost per bag, yes, yes. pricing, and retail? Just run through that. So one bag costs $1.70 to produce. We wholesale for $3.24, and we're on shelf at $4.99. So her numbers are decent, man. She need to get the cost down as far as how much it costs to uh, make, you know. Uh, that's the first thing they're going to look at already. 545. How did you come up with this idea? I got really interested in sustainability when I was just in eighth grade. My mom told me to see an inconvenient truth to Al Gore uh, documentary, and environmental studies was my degree. But I think the big aha moment, I had a friend who had driven off campus to buy a bunch of organic produce and was juicing it. And I basically saw these handfuls of pulp and then the tiniest amount of juice. And she was like, I usually throw this away. I don't. I don't. 
Okay, so you guys gotta think. You gotta know how to take, uh, you gotta be resourced. So sometimes, you ever heard of uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure? That's exactly what Pulp Pantry is. I'm not calling that product trash, but what I'm saying is the waste from the original fruits and vegetables. A lot of people just throw that in the trash. She, as, as an entrepreneur, you have to be, uh, you, you gotta kind of be an artist, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be able to see the beauty in ugliness, you know? Instead of it just being waste, now it can be a multi-million dollar product. I don't know what to do with it. So I took it home, made my first batch of carrot cookies. No. Carrot cookies. Yes, it was carrot cookies. Uh, the idea was honestly just something I pitched in a class project, and I just had professors who honestly were like, this deserves to exist in the world. This is a huge problem. Um, yeah. And I actually got a grant from my university to get started after that. Boom. So as of right now, that's why I say the 10 percent, uh, in my opinion, she didn't she didn't have to give up that 10 percent. Look how uh, excited the sharks are about it. You know what I'm saying? It's going it's to be a frenzy. Her numbers are awesome. Her mission is is, is powerful. So she's going to have a lot of backing behind this and people are going to flood to this product. Uh, anytime you have a cause, like people are going to flood to it if it's strong enough. You know, so she was able to get a grant from her school to get it up and running. All right, so just think about it. Don't think things are too hard for you guys. Where are you getting the public from now? Like that scale. Now, scale. This is the part I don't like when they start asking the extreme details. Some of the details, I know it's entertainment for us, but some of the details should be left out of the public because, you know, the competitors are watching this right now. But I know that they're confident that they can get to market faster. Um, but let's see. We actually work with two of the biggest national juice brands in the country. For them, there's so many challenges with the fact that there is so much organic byproduct that they have to pay a composter to take off their hands. Away. Okay, did y'all pay attention to that? So she created a service that then became a business for her. So she works with two of the biggest juice companies in the world. So let's say it's Florida orange juice or something like that. When they're squeezing and draining and pause these oranges and everything, they have a lot of waste, like the pills and, and all of that extra stuff. They got a lot of waste. So she created a service where instead of them having to call the compost, she can then just say, hey, look, for free, I will come up and take the pulp. I will take the waste from you, Florida orange juice. And they like, okay, cool. It ain't hurting us. So she take it. Then she create a product out of it. So you can take trash and make treasure out of it. Now she's on here. Gotcha. Animal feed, so you can get it because if we can grow and absorb most of that, that byproduct, then it's actually saving them money. Did you pay for the veggies? veggies? Did you hear that? So by her going and collecting this, is actually saving those juicing companies money. So the service that she created created the business for her and helped out the environment and helped out those juicing companies. So this is perfect. That's why I say she shouldn't have to give up too much equity. I wouldn't give up the amount of equity that she gave up. There's so many different ways she could have got back in the front of it, but we're going to keep going. Watch. So we do offer to, to basically cover the labor, the cost of labor. Because they're going to have to pay for somebody else to take it away. Exactly. You basically just do that for them so they have no expense. Yeah. So we are doing sales. We actually finished last year with just under $250,000 in sales. This calendar year, how much? This calendar year, we'll finish the year with just under 500000 Okay, what are you going to make on that? 20,000 now. So we are profitable. 70% of our business is retail. We're in about 600 doors. And about 20% of that is through third party e commerce sites like Thrive Market, Imperfect Produce. But you're asking me to pay you 10 times sales for a NAS snacking company that hasn't really established distribution yet. So here's the part where they're going to talk her down. They're going to talk her down so that they can then try to um, raise the amount of equity that they want to get out of the business. So they, what they do is they minimize your accomplishments so that you can feel like you really, really need them. What she did was pretty genius. OK, so we're going to continue to watch. And you guys let me know if she should have took this deal and side of a couple of trials. So to so speak to the valuation and, and what I would say to that, well, you know, our speak to the valuation. Our rate in the last, the last quarter puts us at about $700,000. And the problem for us has been less than 5% of our revenue in each of our channels has been spent on marketing. I have a lot of experience in this. So majority of the money is going to marketing, guys. And this is why I said that she shouldn't have to give up too much equity. It's not a light. It's not like the majority of the money is going to manufacturing, packaging or, or uh, distribution or some type of issue like that. It's literally just getting the word out, which the sharks know that they got the visibility. They could just get her some visibility and this will just fly off the shelves like 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 that. And I'm not saying that they should devalue their worth and anything like that, but she needs to know her worth and she needs to know her options, man. And that's why you run people like me, you know, protect your assets. Face and clean and corn. It's really competitive. I have to say, though, I think the idea that you turn someone else's garbage into a successful business is amazing. That's the, beauty that's the beauty of it. And not only that, but on top of it, you have such passion and a purpose. But unfortunately, I think you're going to have a, a, a tall mountain of time in the competitive space. So for those reasons, I'm out. I love how Barbara will give you like the best compliment in the world, right? And then say she out. Like <laughs> she builds you up to tear you down, Pharaoh. That's great. Thank you, Barbara. Nice to meet you. Hey, and how much is in your bank account currently? About twenty thousand dollars. Oh, wow. wow. So what's that other shit ever been at? I don't know if I should tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've definitely seen it go down to like a thousand dollars. 
<laughs> and see, that's when I know I'm not from the same hood as, as them. She's talking about some twenty thousand dollars. Ooh, I don't want to say that's that's how low my bank account ever been, man. <laughs> Where I'm from, like <laughs> having no money in your account. A matter of fact, going like, listen, listen, from different area. Right? I think the, the issue for us again is this cash flow cycle. You know, we want to do more in-store promotions and kind of getting people to try, maybe not. Now would be a great time for you to say to the other stars, give me some offers. <laughs> well, uh, listen, I'll start. Um, I don't think you're worth $5 million. Okay, so when they start off like that, you should automatically say, you know what, in your mind, I'm not working with that shark right there. Listen, I want to work with somebody that feel like I can take over the freaking world, even if they don't really, really not, not saying I want them to be honest, but don't put no limited beliefs on something that don't have no limit. You heard how she gets her product. You heard how she gets her, her sources It's literally unlimited possibilities uh, with this product and what she can do with it. So I wouldn't even like put a cap on it and try to make her feel like she's not as big as she actually is. But she doesn't know this yet. But me dealing with what I deal with in businesses and, and products and all of that, I know exactly what she can do to blow this company up without a damn shark. So when they be trying to play her like that, it pisses me off. Let's keep but I'll tell you, it's been very impressive. I've made a lot of money investing in women. Sustainability, check the box. The product is right on trend because I'm growing my gluten. I think your business is worth two million bucks. So I'll give you five hundred thousand for twenty-five percent. He tripping right there. He tripping right there. It is super sustainable. Like they've invested in, in in businesses that didn't have this level of sustainability before, uh, without taking this much equity. Now she's in the in the in the beginning stages of her company and everything, but that's why they're taking advantage of her, man. It's it's as easy as doing a little bit of research and dealing with some consulting companies and some advertising agencies just to find out how much you're worth, man. Like you don't really have to go on a Shark Tank show. I'm just being real. Any inventors or creators watching this right now, before you make a move and go on these shows, these dudes aren't the only investors, first of all. And secondly, it's ways you can bootstrap this without giving up all this equity. Thank you for that offer, Mr. Warren. I'm going to make this easy so you can probably understand your options, right? I actually, for once, agree with Mr. Wonderful. I, like, I think the valuation's a little nuts. Rather than give you an offer that's not the same, I'm going to drop out. But I do wish you good luck because I think you're a fantastic person. I'm just being real with you. If I was one of those sharks, I wouldn't drop out of this one. And you're going to see a little bit later when I drop the other ones, uh, the other videos, what I mean, which is why you need to subscribe right now. Hit the notification because you're going to see exactly some deals that they're going to make with some people that's like, what the hell? And you didn't make the deal with, with the juice girl? Come on. Thank you, Emma. So nice to meet you. The thing for me is, is I love what you're doing. Love, love, love it. But like, you're asking for half a million dollars for 10%. I'm trying to figure out, like, how long will it take for me to see my money back? How about if I gave you the 500,000 as a loan? Because that's, it feels a little safer to me. 500,000 is a loan at 6% interest, which is less than the going rate. Three years to pay it off. And then I would still want the 10% equity stake. Because I gotta go to work for you, right? And I've gotta help you. And I've gotta give you all the knowledge that I know in the food space. That's my offer. Thank you, Lori. But you got two offers. Okay, that's good. So that's what they do. They start talking about their worth. And, you know, after they punch you in the gut with their so called sharky deal, you know, they, they, they hit you with the sharky. Now, let me, let, let, me, let me just say sometimes on Shark Tank, you can get a decent deal sometimes. And it is worth their expertise and their connections because I'm all about leverage. But then there's other times that the deal is like super crazy and you could have just did the stuff by yourself. Like if they want 50% of the company and they only giving you $100,000, dude, listen, that's not good. That's not good. But let's but Mark, what are you gonna do? Two sharks are out. Caitlin has two offers on the table from Kevin and Lori for pulp pantry. Chips made from recycled vegetable waste. But Mark may also be interested. We got two offers. Okay, that's good. Mark, what are you going to do? I'm going to give you a lift. Uh, my Shark Tank companies. <laughs> Bush, Pans, Mushroom Turkey, Peanuts, One a Day, Unreal Deli, Snacklings, Nuts and More, Truffle Shuffle, New Milk, Everything Legendary. All right, so I know about New Milk. New Milk, this actually reminds me of New Milk. That's one of the biggest videos I have on this channel. Matter of fact, go ahead and just type new milk in on this channel. You can check that one out. Too. Mark does have a lot of experience with companies like or similar to this, um, and he has success with this. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to say, OK, let's keep watching. All these are companies in your category, yeah. companies that are on a mission to make the world a better place and to make people healthier. I understand the category. And so I'll make you an offer and it's going to be 500K for 20 percent. 500K for 20 percent. I told you that 10% was high. Um, I understand he's Mark Cuban to all you idolaters out there and everything like that. And he does have visibility. He, ha he does have experience in the space. Uh, but like I said before, for the amount of money, there are things, it's simple advertising campaigns that I know how to run that could get her that money super fast without any equity. 
before I go and get an investor or go to VCs or anything like that, I would suggest a person go to an advertiser because you can take a thousand dollar, five thousand, ten thousand dollar loan, a regular damn payday loan, and put together an advertising campaign that can make five hundred thousand dollars easy. Like I know people like that. If you have the budget, like a small budget, I'm not talking about being rich or something like that. I'm like, well, David, I don't have no money. That's why I'm going on Shark Tank. No, you guys can get a loan for five or ten grand from some regular payday loan joint on the corner in some intersection or something like that. So my point is you could just take something like that and put it into advertising instead of getting it from an investor and you can make that money yourself and not give up any of your equity. That's just being real with you. And I can tell you that, you know, when you walk in the door, we all know every entrepreneur has that limit, that number that they don't want to go above. Yeah. You have to ask yourself, where can you get to? Yeah. Because that's really where the value comes from. What is this company going to look like in two years with or without me? Five years, 10 years? And can you go alone so you don't have to sell, so you can stick to your yeah. mission? For me, I, I'm just going to say, like, I, I, Mark gave a good offer. He gave out his list. Um, I actually, I just love food. And <laughs> so I have a list. I have pizza, cupcake, bam, bagel. You know, I mean, I could yeah. rattle off all of my successes. And The difference is these are all sustainable companies that have a focus on sustainability. And so it's a frozen farmer farm. and they have a farm. What do you want to do? We've got three offers. <sighs> well, Mark, yes, would you come down to 15%? I meet you in the middle 17. You got a deal. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so they had a deal, man. They had a deal. This is what I want to show you. All right, do you guys remember this movie? This was Paranormal Activity. This is the first one. I think they got a, either a $15,000 loan or a uh, uh, or a $10,000 loan or something like that. And they made like $40 million the opening week weekend, either 40 or $80 million the opening weekend. Okay. So when you have an awesome idea, you don't really need an investor or funding like that. They literally took an awesome, super unique and creative idea, similar to Pulp Pantry. Like it's super similar and basic and, and, and but just super unique to the point to where you don't need a lot of money. She's not, she doesn't need a lot of freaking money, man, to the point to where she ain't got to give up all the equity. So she could just get a freaking loan the same way they did and put it into an advertising campaign and go direct to a uh, consumer. You understand what I'm saying? I would do direct to consumer. Okay. Uh, so in my opinion, she made a mistake doing 17% uh, for 500K with Mark. If I was going to give up 500K with a company like hers, I, maybe you guys don't see the potential for Pope Pantry. But if I was going to give up 17% uh, uh, equity, with a company like hers, he got to be talking some millions for real, for real. Not something that I can make with a simple advertiser campaign. Uh, so Mark Cuban took your cash, yes, but you didn't learn how to protect your assets. So all of y'all watching right now, if you got some type of product or something, I wouldn't go to Shark Tank with it. I would contact an advertiser, consultor, uh, a consultant, somebody like that first before I was to ever go to one of these uh, shows like this. Because they're going to rape. Ooh, I didn't mean to say that. They're going to get you out your money, man. I'll just say that. They're going to take you for, for what you got. They don't need to take all your equity like that. But we don't end this off. Love you guys if you're new. Hit us up.